reaction. A thermodynamic uh, analysis would allow you to answer the question, will A convert to B given enough time? And more precisely, given an infinite amount of time and it reaches equilibrium, what will be the product reactant ratio? The bigger this drop, the more product you'll have. They end up at almost the same level, or let's say exactly the same level, at equilibrium. 100 years from now, you'd expect a 50 50 blend because there's no reason to prefer one over the other. So, thermodynamics answers that question. It's absolutely silent on the question of how fast that equilibrium would be achieved. That's the realm of kinetics. Kinetics tells you the rates of a process. Okay, so if we're looking at a nutrient molecule like a glucose molecule breaking down to CO2, uh, we can set up a reaction and we can um, measure the delta G. This is formally how you do it. You take the energy level of the products, you subtract the energy level of the reactants, and in this order of doing this, subtracting that, negative numbers give you favorable reactions. So we're always looking for a delta G less than zero. Okay, so here is that reaction. Here's a glucose molecule reacting with oxygen in respiration. So we're breathing in oxygen right now, so we could do this reaction. It's probably 20 or 25 individual steps involved here. We've reduced it to one summary equation. Um, but if this is glucose and this is CO2 down here, there's a certain amount of energy, hundreds of kcals per mole, um, proceeding to these products, CO2 and O2. So the, by knowing the delta G, we can say it's favorable. We can say what the equilibrium ratio would be the equilibrium concept. So the oxidation of glucose to CO2, we can say it's thermodynamically favorable. Um, because it has a negative delta G. Here's a first glimpse. This slide inadvertently shows the topic we're going to be talking about in the future, that is enzymes. So here's glucose. There's the product CO2, complete oxidation. There's a barrier in between, lots of activation energy. So glucose in solution on its own, even if there's oxygen in solution, isn't going to be oxidized to CO2 at any appreciable rate because its barrier is so high. What makes it feasible inside our cells the fact that we have enzymes, like the Buechner brothers, that, that lower the activation energy barrier, make the speed bump low enough that at body temperature this reaction will go. So enzymes act as accelerants to speed up reactions by getting rid of the activation energy barrier. They don't change the energy situation with regard to where you start and where you end. So the enzymes don't change equilibrium constants. They only speed up reactions. And we'll